It was supposed to be safer, less expensive, and less invasive than getting their tubes tied. Well, why are so many people complaining about a popular birth control device? ABC 2 News investigator Josie Sherman dug through the federal records to find out. Josie? Well, Kelly, there are questions about whether that device called Eshore is actually making some women sick. Those who've had problems don't just want it out of their bodies, they want it off the market. Harford County mom Crystal Donahue is prepping for a surgery many women her age usually don't have to consider for years. It's kind of like your womanhood is just, you know, ripped out from you. 33 year old Maribel Zarita is also facing that same reality. I'm out of options. I've exhausted all options, so now I'm due to get a total hysterectomy. These two women taking drastic steps to get their bodies back to normal to finally put an end to the health nightmares they say started with two tiny metal coils. My body is just devastated. Damaged, they say, by a birth control device called Eshore. It uses coils placed into your fallopian tubes. They eventually scar over, closing up the path for good, basically tying your tubes without the need for surgery. Before you had Eshore, were you aware of problems associated, symptoms or people no. crying out to say it was no. a problem? No. Absolutely no. not. But now Crystal, Maribel, Vishon Merchant, and thousands of other women say they're all too familiar with problems they blame on Eshore. Bloating, back and belly pain, headaches, moving coils, cysts, and more. Almost 3,000 women detailed their agony on a Facebook page designed to let women share their pictures, their anger, and their stories. We pretty much all share the same problems, like just, you know, throw them in a pot, and it's like you just pull them out one by <laughs> one, and everybody's got the same issues. And ABC2 investigators dug through federal records to back up their stories. We discovered more than 943 adverse reaction reports from patients and doctors on the FDA's website, dating back to 2002 when the device was first approved. More than 600 cited pain as a problem. In more than 150 cases, doctors reported the the device breaking or moving, with the coils perforating the fallopian tubes or uterus. And the records show at least 91 women needed a hysterectomy to remove the device. That's the procedure Crystal and Maribel have opted to have this month. I can't wait to oh. feel normal again. Yes. Normalcy is all these women want after the pain they've gone through. For at least one patient, the situation was tragic. FDA records show a death when you search Eshore's reports. That woman went to the ER with stomach pain, and the doctor's report says her cervix, fallopian tubes, and uterus were necrotic, basically dying when the patient was seen, and that she had a form of strep. But the report stopped short of blaming her death on the device, with the attending physician saying it was not related to Eshore. It actually has the lowest rate of failure. OBGYN Danielle Staker was involved in the clinical trials for Eshore in Baltimore. The device was originally put on the market by a company called Conceptus, which was bought by Bayer in June. Like Bayer, Staker believes the birth control is safe, but she says only for the right woman, a woman without a nickel allergy. They're made of titanium steel um, with a little nickel. So another important thing to tell your doctor if you were interested in this um, is nickel allergy is very common. And the records show allergy problems have been reported again and again to the FDA, with as many as 113 reports related to potential nickel allergies. When originally approved by the FDA, the device advised women to have a skin test done before getting Eshore. But in July 2011, the manufacturer convinced the FDA to remove that skin test warning and sent out a press release saying the label change expanded the number of potential patients who could use the device. A Bayer spokesman says, however, the current label does warn about nickel allergies. We care about patients and take the safety of our products very seriously. We are saddened to hear of any patient who has been harmed by any one of our products, regardless of the cause. The company also says the FDA complaints reflect just a small percentage of the more than 750,000 women who use the device worldwide. Do you think Assure should be taken off the market? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Without a doubt. But these women know that's very doubtful, and so is their option to take action against the company. Legally, they can't. There was just going to be no recourse for these women. No recourse, no lawsuits, no damages because of an FDA rule that protects the manufacturer and makes them virtually impossible to sue. But the impacted patients now have a big name activist in their corner to fight it. 
Erin Brockovich. I don't know what else it takes for us to look at a group of women, thousands of them, that are having a problem that maybe something is wrong. That Facebook page is now over 3,000 members, and people are starting to take notice. This weekend in D.C., doctors taking part in a global congress on gynecology have agreed to meet with a group of Eshore patients. They already have Erin Brockovich on their side, as you saw there. Tomorrow night at 6, much more on her fight to stop that FDA rule that stops these women from suing. And we'll tell you why a local attorney says it's going to be an uphill battle. But in the meantime, we want you to go to abc2news.com. We put up special case studies featuring the women we showed you in our story. If you click on their pictures, you can hear audio clips from our interviews and read a little bit more about them. In addition, we put up assure complaints from the FDA. These are actual government complaints that you can read more about. About what these women have been through and find out a little bit more about this situation. You'll find all of that on ABC2news.com. Josie Sturman, ABC2 News.